coming from a background of like beauty and editorial photography, like that's what I wanted to go into. I think I was exposed to kind of some of the expectations held that I wasn't like we were just talking about body expectations, uh, skin color, all of these things, and I didn't find that doing those jobs spoke to me, or like as as a Latina, as a trans woman, I just did not see myself represented, nor any of my friends. I love my hair. <laughs> my hair has always been really important to me. Um, when I like first started transitioning, my hair was not. My hair was like sort of the only tangible thing I had to. Uh, like ground myself back into my body. I will say that uh, understanding my whiteness definitely helped me have a deeper understanding of how broad the spectrum of being Latinx is and how um, how I can impact that and how I can be an asset and an ally. My grandmother is uh, from Peru and so she hosts in Massachusetts where I'm from uh, Peruvian night during Semana Hispana and she does like she gathers every Peruvian person within like a 50 mile radius and everyone's stuffed in like this like church gym and it's just this food dancing we crown like uh, Miss Peru every year it's I mean it's all been about support so I spent a lot of time believing that that was what beauty was about it was just aesthetic and it was this one lens, um, the Western lens. I never would see, you know, a hijabi Latina Arab girl in a beauty campaign, and now that that's pretty normal. And that's just really, I don't know, it makes me happy. My relationship with my hair is it's special because in that side of my heritage, it's kind of like a, a sacred thing you, that you kind of only share with, you know, your family and, you know, people who are really close to you. In my Palestinian and in my Puerto Rican um, heritage, like we, we really love to enjoy ourselves and celebrate, even though we both come from like, our countries have faced a lot of like, terrible things. Um, we still like find joy, find happiness, and yeah, no one can take that joy away. It's really beautiful. Well, my mom and my dad, they don't speak English. So like I speak Creole to them because like there's Creole and then there's like French. But like, I don't think I'll ever forget Creole. I don't think I'll ever fully forget French either because it's like broken Creole. I feel like beauty for everyone is like different. I hate being put in a box so much. So like, yeah, I just think, yeah, I just feel like when you're, once you're in a box, you can't go up and down. You're just in a box. It doesn't matter how good you are. Like you're just in a box, <laughs> stuck. So I hate, I hate to feel stuck basically. My mom, like, she tries to understand everyone, even though, like, for example, like, my hair, like, Haiti, like, you, that kind of hair, they're kind of like, oh, you're a bad kid. But, like, my mom, I know she's probably thinking about that, but, like, she's, like, understands me and, like, try to, like, you're not a bad kid. You just, it's just hair. You just like it the way you are. And it's just, like, yeah. So, like, I try to be, like, understood of, like, everyone that I meet. I just, like, try to, like, treat them the way I want to be treated. I feel like it's really non-existent to talk about your mental health and how you're doing in our culture. But um, I do see a positive um, rise in like actually talking about mental health and worrying about each other. Lots of work, hard work, hands-on work. Just seeing how my mom started fresh here from nothing to she owned her own business when I was younger. Just like seeing that whole change was really amazing. I do consider myself Latinx. I like it, it's gender neutral. Um, so growing up, I always heard Latina, like, ooh, Latina, you're so exotic. And I hated that. I hated being called exotic because I'm like, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm, eh. It's not like that big of a deal to me, but everyone else was like, oh, Latina, Latinx. It's just like gender neutral and not as like in your face. Well, definitely making uh, platanos in the morning, okay? Un mangucito. Hello, con lo tres golpe. There's not a time, there's not a coffee colado in my mom's house, you know what I mean? So that's something that I feel that I, that stays with me, and I make, you know, like I said, a platano for lunch. Sometimes I make it for dinner. I had it yesterday. <laughs> definitely my mom. My mom was just my best friend, and she, she taught me everything, how to be a wife, how to be a mother. Okay. <laughs> how, to, how, to, how to just, you know, be a... Um, 
a hard worker and to kind of to believe in yourself and not to settle for, you know, what everybody else says that you should be. Uh, but you know what, I feel very passionate about that because she really, she really did, you know, mold me into who I am today and, and made me kind of like help me believe in myself. I really enjoy just how alive we are. There's not a dull moment when you're around a Dominican. <laughs> Everybody's your primo. <laughs> our cultures on our terms.